Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and welcome back to another Sunday sew along. Um, so today we are starting a new sew along and we are going to be, um, this is a little different than my typical sew alongs. I am going to be sewing along with a pattern and I'll be doing a uh, Butterick 6702, is that right? Yep, 6702, um, which is a shirt dress. However, with this sew along you can really follow along with any shirt dress and or uh, button up shirt pattern. Um, as long as it has the standard collar stand, collar, um, and then if it has a continuous lap placket on the sleeve with a cuff, or if it has a tower placket, I'll be showing both methods. So um, this pattern comes in uh, three views. I'm not as crazy about view B because it does have an asymmetrical hem, which is, it just doesn't do much for me. I actually want to do, the only difference between, well I shouldn't say that, the difference between A and C is both the sleeves and the skirt length. I'm definitely doing the sleeves of C because I'm showing you guys how to do uh, your standard sleeve, but I'm actually gonna do a length in between A and C. I don't want anything as long as C. I kind of want midi. I want it below my knee, um, but not as not below my calf like the, this gal is wearing. So I'll be making my own length. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll just be measuring my waist and from my waist down and figuring out kind of whereabout I'd kind of like that and then um, going from there. So let's talk about, um, let's talk about what we're gonna do today. <laughs> now, I am going to, um, today we're gonna go through the pattern pieces that you need, um, which again, with this pattern, uh, it's basically, everything is just different hem lengths, and then I'm obviously using the sleeve of C. And I think the sleeve of, yeah, the sleeve of B too, because we're gonna do with a standard sleeve. But again, you can follow along with any button up shirt dress or shirt pattern. Now the only difference between a button up shirt and the shirt dress is gonna be the hem. I already do have a video um, on how I like to sew my shirt tail hems. So I will be directing you over to that um, when the time comes, because obviously I'll just be doing a narrow hem on the hem of this one, because uh, it's just a, you know, a curved, your regular curved hem, it's not, you know, the shirt tail. But I am going to be showing you how to do both the continuous lap placket and a tower placket. Um, so the tower placket is the, and the placket is the part, um, just to be clear, for those that don't know, on the sleeve that allows the uh, sleeve to open. So, you know, the cuff opens um, so you can get your arm through, you can roll it up, that kind of thing. Um, the tower placket is the one that looks like it's either a long rectangle or a lot of times it has the little house on the top. Um, I'm gonna be showing you how to do that. That's a tower placket. And then a continuous lap placket, which actually I had a really hard time finding any big four pattern that had a uh, tower placket. All of them have used the continuous lap placket, which is fine. It's another um, delicate, it's a little bit more delicate um, finish for the vent. Uh, so, you know, I think that I would use that probably more in um, drapier fabrics. Um, just because it is a little bit more delicate. And when you get something really drapey, like if you're making a shirt with like a, a charmeuse, like a silk charmeuse, or a um, like a chalet or anything with rayon in it, a tinsel, um, the tower plackets can get very fiddly because it's a lot of precise folding and that kind of thing. Um, so those kind of do a little bit better with the more stable bodied fabrics. However, um, yeah, so I'm gonna show you how to do both. So you can, you know, pick depending on what project you're doing. <laughs> um, anyway, so this sew along is gonna be broken up into a lot of little pieces is my thought process. Um, just because I want it to be very easily accessible uh, when you're going back and if you're doing a button up shirt or whatever, because again, you don't really have to follow along with the pattern. Button up shirt and shirt dresses are pretty much the same around, you know, for all. Um, it's kind of the same order of things and all that, that kind of thing. So I wanted them to be broken up. So it'll probably be a lot a lot more videos. Typically my sew alongs are about four um, videos long, four weeks long. This is probably going to be a little bit longer and they'll be a little bit shorter. Um, you know, like I'll have a video just on how to do the collar and collar stand, um, you know, and how to attach that. A video just on a sleeve, you know, the continuous lap sleeve. A video just on the tower placket sleeve uh, and that kind of stuff just as we're, as we're going. Uh, okay, let's talk about this pattern though. Um, Shirts, you can do shirts, you'll see shirt patterns with princess seams, um, you'll see shirts with uh, darts, I mean all sorts of things. This pattern actually has a waist dart, and that's the only dart in the bodice, so all of the dart bulk is in the um, the waist dart, because the skirt is in um, panels, so I think it's seven panels total through the whole circumference of the skirt. It's going to be a fairly full skirt. Uh, and then there's darts in the back as well, yes. And there's a yoke, 
on the back of this so I can show you guys how to do the burrito method when um, finishing off yolks on shirts. Um, what else to say about this pattern? Other than that, it's like pretty much your standard shirt dress pattern. Uh, this does, this pattern does come with the cup sizes, which I find way easier to fit. <laughs> it's just one less thing I have to do. And I know a lot of people have to do full or small bust adjustments. So, you know, and you may still need to do a little bit of one, but this does take a lot of the guesswork out of most of that. Um, so today we're going to be making a muslin and I'm going to be showing you how, um, I've actually already made it and made some, uh, assessments on it as so I am going to be making some additional changes. So we're going to talk about uh, the pattern, how I pick my size, then I'm going to show you the muslin that I've made up and talk about the fitting that I'm going to make and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to do those fitting adjustments on the pattern. So that's what we're going to be covering today and then next week we will get into cutting out our fashion fabric, which brings me to fashion fabric. <laughs> I'm going to be using this gorgeous cotton lawn. This is from Minerva. Um, it's got, I think that it's fruit. Fruit and flowers, I guess. Anyway, I love the colors in this. In fact, my whole, um, I'm really basing my um, fall module uh, wardrobe basically off of this fabric because it's basically the colors I want to be wearing all fall. <laughs> um, anyway, this is a cotton lawn. Like I said, cotton is great for shirts. Um, I mean, you could even use quilting cotton if you wanted to. That does get a little bulky um, and doesn't maybe look quite as ready to wear as, say, a cotton uh, poplin or a cotton lawn. Um, cotton lawn, let's talk about, I, have I done, no, I haven't done a cotton video yet on fabrics. Cotton lawn. Cotton lawn is a very thin, lightweight fabric. However, it is extremely tightly woven, which makes it really, really soft. So when you think of like Liberty, for instance, the Liberty cotton tonne lawns that everyone talks about, the reason that they feel like silk is because they are so tightly woven that it makes almost a, um, like a silk-like softness to the fabric. This one isn't as soft as a Liberty, but um, lawns are very tightly woven, which even though they're uh, very lightweight, makes them quite opaque 90% of the time. Now the difference between a lawn and a voil is that a cotton voil is also lightweight, but it is not quite as tightly woven. So a lot of times it has more transparency, you'll need to line things, that sort of, that sort of thing. Um, so that's kind of the difference between those two uh, fabrications, just if you're uh, kind of going back and forth and trying to decide what to use for this dress. You can use anything that is shirting. This dress that I'm wearing is actually a shirting weight, um, and that's usually it's heavier than a cotton lawn, but it's usually very smooth. Um, you know, it's meant for men's shirts. A lot of times you'll find them in very, in men print. Um, but yeah, you could also make this out of a shirt weight flannel. Um, I think that would be very cozy for the fall and winter if you are sewing for those months. Um, if you're sewing for warmer months, this would be beautiful in a linen. Um, I would definitely, I mean, you don't have to, I guess. You could do this in a, what does it say? You could do it in a chalet. You could do it in a chalet or anything with a rayon, like a thinner um, rayon twill, um, like a, a tinsel twill or a rayon twill. Um, again, a chalet, anything of really lightweight denim, like a tinsel denim, like a cotton tinsel mix that looks like um, um, denim, <laughs> but that's more of like a chambray. Um, chambray also would be a good thing to look for. It's a, a cotton fabric as well. But yes, any of those would, would be fantastic. Now, if you're using something like a rayon that has a little bit more drape or a tinsel, you're going to have a drapier skirt, just so you know, and a heavier skirt. So any of those rayons, and this is a lot of skirt because it's got a lot of fullness. So just know that you may need to always wear a belt with it to help anchor it at your waist, um, just to keep the skirt from pulling everything down and looking kind of uh, frumpy a little bit, for lack of a better word. Um, but you could definitely use those fabrics. So yeah. Cotton blends, poplin, chalet, lightweight denim. I would use very lightweight denim, like four ounce. I wouldn't go anything bigger or heavier than a four ounce for the denim. Um, linen and rayon. Yeah. So just a standard shir uh, shirt dress. Um, it also calls for interfacing. I like to use... Um, I like to use for my shirts because I'm not typically making like a men's dress shirt most of the time. So for my shirts, I like to use the Palmer Pletch um, So Sheer interfacing. That is like my favorite interfacing. I also use their medium weight interfacing a lot, but that's more for if I'm doing any tailoring or I need a little bit heavier duty. Those are pretty much the two um, uh, interfacings I use, I mean, 95% of the time probably. 
Um, unless I'm doing like a blazer or something, I may go for a little bit, a little bit heavier weight on uh, some of the fusibles. But for the most part, I keep those in stock all of the time. However, if you are wanting a crisper collar and a crisper cuff, more like a men's dress shirt, um, I will link down below. Fashion Sewing Supply also has some great interfacing. All their stuff's really wonderful as well. But they have a shirt crisp, which is kind of the interfacing that kind of got them started. That was kind of their, the reason that they started their company was finding a good fusible um, shirt interfacing. So um, it, it just makes, it makes a very crisp collar. So depending on the look you want and what you feel comfortable with, that is definitely an option as well. And I will leave a link to that um, interfacing down below as well. Um, and we will talk next week about the pieces that we are going to be interfacing and how I like to do that. Okay, and uh, finally, you're going to need buttons. I am, let's see, I think it's nine buttons for view A, which is, of course, above the knee. But the view A also doesn't have the um, buttons on the sleeves because uh, it's a, like a three-quarter length sleeve on that one. And then for view C, it calls for 15 buttons. Now, I won't be making mine as long as view C, so I have 12 buttons here. And these I bought at a flea market. They are a card of vintage pearl buttons. I paid $3 for them for all 12. So I have a feeling that I won't need more than 12, um, probably about 12, to be honest. So these are the buttons I'm gonna be using. I didn't wanna use anything, I mean, anything's gonna get lost on this. Um, I thought about green would be pretty, or an orange button, but this is what I had in my stash, so this is what we're using. <laughs> So just find a nice button. Um, you can use something a little bit more fun if you're using a solid fabric or, um, you know, if you're using a print, I just find that the, the buttons get lost in prints so easily. So I don't want to waste any of my really fun buttons on prints. Um, anyway, that is basically it that we will need for if you're doing a shirt or a shirt dress. Okay, so now we are gonna go and I'm going to show you all of the uh, pattern pieces, how I pick my size, and then we're gonna look at the muslin and then we're gonna make the adjustments to the pattern. Um, I have a couple of good adjustments I'm gonna be showing you today because um, when I made up my muslin, I noticed that there was a lot of ease in the sleeve cap. So we're gonna talk about that over at the cutting table as well. All right, guys, if you have any questions, don't forget to leave them down below. Um, I will answer those as quickly as I can, keeping in mind that I am now a part-time teacher. <laughs> My kids are on a hybrid schedule for school and they have no teacher support on their virtual days. So um, uh, that's me. <laughs> so yeah, my time is a little bit more divided than it has been um, in the past, but we're going to make it work. It's going to be fine. Um, also, if you enjoyed this tutorial and really felt like you learned something and would like to help support the channel, I do have a coffee account, which is like a virtual tip jar. The link for it is down below. If you'd like to leave a little tip, all that goes right back into the channel to help make the sew alongs and the tutorials a little bit more professional. Uh, and easier to understand. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you have a good Sunday and I will see you again next week for part two. Okay, let's go through our pattern pieces. Okay, so we have a sleeve. Um, this is the sleeve for um, all the pattern, um, uh, oh my gosh, views. <laughs> Except that you just cut here above the, um, vent here for view A. Um, we're obviously making the sleeve with the vent. Um, this is the slash and the pleat. So we have that piece. Then we have a cuff because we're making the sleeve with the cuff. Um, this has a, a back bodice and a back yoke. I'm making size 14 with the D cup. I pick my size based on the uh, bust measurement that the pattern gives for a size 14. That bust measurement is 36. That is my upper bust measurement, my um, which is right underneath my armpits, above my um, boobs, basically, um, is 36 inches. And so that's how I pick my size, because then that will be the best fit in the shoulders and that kind of thing. And then I um, picked the D cup, so that gives me the room that I need in the bust, um, which I will show you in a second when we get to the front. Um, but yes, the back, we have a yoke and a bodice back. And then when you look at the actual pattern pieces, uh-oh, hold on, I taped a piece here. Um, I accidentally cut into this pattern piece. It was underneath another piece and it got cut. Um, but I'm making the, uh, this is the D cup front. Um, it says right here, D cup, um, bodice front for all. There's obviously a big dart here, but it gives you the finished measurements here at the bust. And for a size 14, it's 41 and a half. My current bust measurement is 39. So that is, or 38 and a half to 39 inches. So that gives me at least 
uh, two and a half inches of ease at the bust and I like at least two. So that is perfect for a shirt dress. So um, I'm not making any additional um, changes to that. I often on a size 14 have to up the waist measurement, but for some reason, um, if that is not an issue for you, you may want to look, there's quite a few skirt pieces here. This is a very full skirt. Um, but let's see, I think it's on the center front piece. Yes, skirt front. There's four different pattern pieces for the skirt pieces. Um, there's actually the waist measurements here. And for a 14, it's 36 and a half inches, um, which at first I'm like, well, that's almost, that's too big. I have a 32 inch waist, um, give or take, it can fluctuate. But actually once I made this up, I didn't change the waist measurement at all. And it seems to be just fine. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, because I've already made the muslin. I'll show it to you in a second. <laughs> um, but you may want to definitely make a muslin and check that um, waist measurement to see if you need to make it smaller. Because if I did actually have, I can't remember what the 14 waist measurement is normally. Um, I think it's like a 28 inch. Because um, I normally have to add quite a bit of um, to my waist for that to fit just fine. So definitely check that measurement because it seems to be a lot of extra ease um, there. But again, that could also be a, a misprint. I haven't actually measured it because there's just so many skirt panels. Um, but anyway, something to take into account. I have gone ahead and shortened each of the skirt panels by two inches. I just took it up from the bottom. I measured up two inches so I can keep the curve. Um, and then I've marked two inches above the A cut line too, if I ever want to make that pattern. I may end up actually making it even shorter because um, I'm going to cut view C, I think, but I may pick a line in between view A and view C for um, my length of skirt because I kind of want it. I don't want it as long as what um, you see is on me. Taking off two inches puts me about correct to the model. I think these are drafted for five, six people. So anything that I take off from here on out is just more for um, my own preferences. So yeah, so there's four skirt pieces. And then you have a front band. And I want to note, uh, especially for the muslin, this front band you cut four. So it's going to you're gonna have um, four, obviously it's really long. When you're cutting, well, we'll talk about muslin in a second. Um, but yeah, you do cut four of these, so this doesn't get folded. This is the whole band. Obviously, you take, you're gonna take off for the seam allowances, but this is the whole center band, because there'll be four of those. And then this pattern uses a continuous lap placket, and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. I will also cover the tower placket as well and show you how to sew that, but for this one, um, is it does have the continuous lap piece. That is for the vent and the sleeve. And then you have your collar stand and your collar. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and make our muslins. Uh, again, the only changes that I've made to the patterns before my muslin is that I have, um, well, shortened the skirt, but that's not gonna, <laughs> I'm not making the skirt for my muslin. I'm just gonna muslin the bodice. So that means that I need my yoke, my back bodice, my yoke and my back bodice, I need my front bodice, and I need my button band. Now you don't need to cut this entire button band, I just put this up to it and um, up to the pattern piece and folded it for the length that I needed, because you don't need it all the way down obviously, because you're not, I, you don't need to muzzle on the skirt really, as long as the waist fits you, which is the waist that's here at the bodice. Um, there's so much fullness in the bottom of the skirt, it will fit your hips. Um, Okay, and then I went ahead and muslined the sleeve and cuff, mostly because I was doing a tutorial, which you saw last Sunday, on how to sew in a sleeve in the round. Um, but I also wanted to check the length. So I have shortened the sleeve by an inch and a half, which is typical for me for big four patterns. I'm only 5'2". So I have gone ahead and shortened the sleeve pattern by an inch and a half. And I went ahead and sewed the cuff on too, just to get a full idea to make sure I had the sleeve long enough with enough um, you know, ease. You want a little bit of length ease there in a button up shirt. But I'm very glad I did sew up the sleeve. And I'm gonna show you um, here in a second, there is way, way too much ease in the sleeve cap. And we will talk about that um, over at the um, muslin stage. And then I'm gonna show you how to remove that. Okay, 
So there we have it. So go ahead and get your um, pieces cut out for your muslin. You can do the sleeve or not. It's kind of up to you on how you feel about fitting. But I'm going to take you over um, and show you what my muslin looks like and what I'm going to do to um, uh, fitting-wise. Okay, so here is my muslin for this bodice. Now, let's adjust a few things or look at a few things first. I'm going to be headless for this. You can see how it is bowing there. Now, so clearly it's a little tight through there, which is a little baffling to me because I thought that that should fit with a little bit of extra. Um, I measured myself again, the 40, let's see, the size um, 14D bust measurements, 41 and a half, which is actually three and a half. I mean, that's what it says on the pattern. I haven't actually measured the pattern. My body measurement though is 38 and a half right now across my, my fullest part of my bust. So I'm not really sure why that's pulling, but it is. So, <laughs> and I don't want gapey, um, um, I don't want a gaping here. So what I'm gonna do, I could do a little bit more of a full bust adjustment. I need a little bit more, this is just a little tighter than I wanted, um, which again, I thought it was gonna be maybe possibly too loose than I wanted um, when I looked at the measurements on the pattern. So it could be that the pattern just needs to be remeasured, that those numbers might be off. Um, cause I'm remeasured myself again and I'm, I'm measuring again at the same. Um, but I'm going to just add on my side seams, um, and we'll do that over at the, the table. I'm just going to add a quarter of an inch on each side, which will give me a full extra inch all the way across. I think that that will alleviate this <laughs> so that that will sit better. Um, maybe even three eighths of an inch just to be on the safe side. Um, and I'll take it up to nothing at the underarm cause I don't need it up here at the underarm, which is in this area, that is fitting just fine. That's fine, it's right here that really needs it. So um, I'm gonna, nothing at the armpit um, to 3 eighths of an inch all the way, the rest of the way down. That will fix this issue. So that's number one. Number two, um, you can see obviously my cuff, it, that the sleeve is a little bit long. I've taken an inch and a half out. Now I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm not gonna take any more out because Look how much off, this is the top of my shoulder, is where this pin is. That is where my shoulder bends. So this whole sleeve is going to be coming up and in to that point. There we go. And that's how that's going to look. So I'm going to do a narrow shoulder adjustment of whatever that distance is. I've just marked where I want it to end. So I'm going to measure the distance there and do a narrow shoulder adjustment of that amount. And that's probably, that may be a full inch which is pretty, I mean, that's a, a common one I have to do. Not always, but very common. Um, and then for the last thing that I'm going to fix, so I'm adding a little bit to the side seams, both the front and back, just to give myself a little more room. And then um, my, I'm gonna do narrow shoulder adjustment. Now, when I was putting the sleeve in, there's way too much ease in the sleeve cap. So there is, um, and the way I figure this out is I measured the pattern, the arm's eye of the pattern, um, both the back yoke and the back and then the front. And um, then I measured the sleeve cap of the pattern on the sleeve. There is an inch and three quarters of ease in the sleeve cap, which is way too much for a button up shirt or any kind of blouse. Um, you need like three quarters of an inch of ease. And that just gives you ease of movement so that you can, you know, move around a little bit and especially there in the shoulder cap where you need, where you need that ease. Now, an inch and three quarters would make total sense if you were doing a jacket or a coat, especially when you, things that you would make out of wool, because that eases in very easily. Um, so you can have a lot more ease, because it does give a nice shape and does allow for much more ease of movement in heavier weight fabrics, such as wools, if you're making a coat or a jacket. Now, for shirts, that is usually a tighter weave. It's usually um, like a cotton, for instance. A cotton shirting is a much tighter weave, very hard to ease in. They don't ease in well, and you don't need it just because it's a thinner fabric and you just don't need that much ease. So I'm actually going to remove, uh, again, there's an inch and three quarters of ease in the sleeve cap. I'm gonna remove an inch so that there's just three uh, quarters of an inch um, of ease in that sleeve cap. That's all you need. An inch, maybe, um, but you do not need an inch and three quarters. And in my tutorial on Sunday, I kind of showed you how to cheat that, where you basically just push the, the sleeve cap up past the um, cut edge of the arm side when you're sewing it in. But um, I don't want to do that. Like that's, I want to, I'll show you how to adjust the pattern. And that's why we do muslins, right? I don't always do them, but I'm glad I did it on this one because I'm getting ready to use some very beautiful fabric. 
So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take ease out of the sleeve cap, I'm going to do a narrow shoulder adjustment, and I'm going to add just a little bit to the um, side seams. You'll see that this is pulling here too. When I do that narrow shoulder adjustment, that's going to bring that sleeve in all the way up, and it's going to give me a lot more range of motion too there. And I don't need to do a petite adjustment on this one. The darts are actually, my apex is right here, and my dart is ending about, oh, an inch below. So that's right where it should be on those. So I think, yeah, I don't think I need a petite adjustment on this one. I just need to add a little bit of extra room so that I get rid of my gaping and a little bit extra here at the waist, um, especially with the button down. I just don't want anything pulling or gaping. I want it fitted, but not overly fitted. Uh, and then we'll adjust the sleeve and the uh, shoulder. So let's go do that. So now that we have our muslin, we're going to go through each piece one by one. All right, so if you recall, with the muslin, the first thing I want to do is add some width to the um, bodice. Just a little bit. Remember, it was a little tight, and it was kind of pulling across my chest, and just a little tighter at the waist than I wanted. I wanted just a little bit more ease. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is add some uh, extra width to the side seam. So here is my front piece here. Um, I'll put it sideways, make sure everything's in focus here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to find my ruler here and I'm basically going to add three eighths of an inch and I want it to be most of the way up. So I'm going to make a three eighths of an inch all the way up here real quick because I do want an extra three eighths most of the way up, but I do want it to kind of taper here um, to nothing. And I'm actually just gonna kind of curve this out, which may seem a little strange, um, but I'll do the same to the back. So now once I've done that, I just need that little bit of extra room right there for my bust. So now I'm just gonna trim little slightly less. All right, so there is that on the front piece, right here on the side seam. Okay, we're gonna put this back to the left because we still need to do the narrow shoulder adjustment on that piece. But we'll get to that in a second. All right, and then with the back, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'll turn it this way real quick. So I'm just going to do a 3 eighths of an inch all the way down. Connected here at the bottom, and then again, just kind of curve that in. So then we are going to cut the excess off. Okay, now, I'm gonna make that a little bit less of a curve there. Okay. So now we have the excess added to the back of the side seam. I'm gonna put this back to the left too because we still need to do the narrow shoulder adjustment. All right, now because we've added that extra three inch, three eighths of an inch to the um, side seam of the front and the back, we need to do the same to the skirt pieces so they match up. Um, there are four skirt pattern pieces. We only need to add to the skirt side front and the skirt side back because um, I want my side seams to match. So basically, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to add three eighths of an inch here, but I want to take it to nothing. Just like that. Need a little bit more tape there, I think. So then I can go in and trim that excess off. Just like that. Okay, now this can go to the right so that piece is done. And again, this is just the skirt side front and the skirt side back. I'm not messing with the any of the extra um, seams because there's a center back and a center um, front. Those are fine. 
All right, now the skirt side back, we're gonna do the same thing. Gonna make a 3 eighths of an inch increase. Take that to there. I think I need a little more tape on that piece too. Okay, so then I will cut the excess off on this one as well. You can scooch out your um, markings here if that helps you to remember to cut them. A little extra at the top. Okay, so that's all I'm doing to that. Now I mentioned that I may adjust the um, length on this skirt. Um, I'm gonna make a determination when I'm cutting out. I very well just might find a midway point between uh, view A cut line and view C cut line and just find something kind of in between and then hem, you know, try it on and hem it from there where I want it. Um, but I will do that probably in the, more in the cutting out phase. That's an easy one to adjust. Okay. Um, what should we do next? Okay. Let's do our shoulder next. So I did note that I needed a narrow shoulder adjustment. So I'm going to measure from my pen and yeah, that's like right at an inch. Usually it's anywhere from three quarters of an inch to an inch that I have to, if I do need a narrow shoulder adjustment, that that's the amount. So what we are going to do, we'll do the back first because the back's a little more complicated because we have a yoke. So what I'm going to do, I've got the bodice back and I've marked my seam line here. And then here's my yoke and I've also marked my seam line here. Now I'm gonna set those on top of each other now you could tape that if you wanted to. Um, I'm just gonna put a pattern weight. You wanna overlap your line that you've made. Uh, Cause sometimes, I know you can buy tape that makes it easier for patterns, but. There we go. Okay. So now you wanna take a piece of tracing paper and you want to lay it over your arm. And I'm tra tracing the arm's eye curve because we don't want to change the length of the arm's eye. We're just changing the orientation of it kind of. And make sure you mark in your um, uh, notches because you'll need those. Okay, so that's what my arm's eye looks like for the back. So now I'm gonna mark in, I feel like I might be out of frame here. Make sure that I'm in frame. Okay, I'm gonna mark in an inch. It usually comes very close to that notch, and it is. Okay, so that's my new shoulder point that I want right here where I've made that notch, which is an inch in. So now I put this piece of paper very carefully underneath here and I'm gonna mark, match that up there. And then I'm gonna have to adjust my weights here because I need to be able to slide that under. And then I'm going to, um, I'm pivoting. I really wanna make sure you can see that. Yeah, you can, okay. <laughs> I'm going to pivot this until I get this point here that I drew in to match up with my seam allowance, which is right about there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is very carefully, so this does not change the length of your arm's eye as all, at all. You're just literally rotating it. So I'm taping down here at the bottom where I have to add a little bit, which is pretty normal. So I'm now going to trace what I can see through the tracing paper. And you're going from the yoke. Uh-oh, my yoke got messed up. Dang it. Okay. Make sure that yoke stays. And then remark your new notches. Those are going to be important because those have moved. Okay. So now, oh, and then here at the side, seam, I just connect it. It should be just a straight line down. 
And yes, this did raise your underarm, but that is, um, that's what it's gonna do because it's rotating everything in and trust me, <laughs> it will all make sense and it will fit your arm so much better. Okay, so now that we've done that, we are going to separate our pieces and I'm literally just cutting off where I marked. And again, don't forget to mark those notches because those will move even just a little bit and you want that to be correct when you're putting your sleeve in. So there we go. So now we have adjusted it here. I cut off a little bit of excess there at the back. Sometimes it also helps to tape down the excess in the back so it's not flapping around. And we've adjusted the shoulder now on the yoke and on the back. So the front's gonna be a lot easier if we don't have to put any pieces together. So these two pieces are now finished. We can put these over to the right. So now we're gonna do the same thing with the front. Put that over. And I'm just going to draw in, tracing my arm's eye curve. Marking my notch. So there's my curve. I'm gonna go in an inch. I don't need the weights for this one, so I'm not trying to keep anything together there. Makes it a little easier to flanagle. Okay, so I've got those two matched up here at the top. So now I'm just gonna swing this out. Until that matches right there. And I'm going to tape under the arm here. And you'll see that your my notch has moved a little. So I'm just going to connect the side seam up to the top there. And then I'm going to draw in the change up here. And you should be the same amount on the front and the back. I'm also kind of playing around with that side seam since I did add. I don't want anything to be added here at the underarm because I just didn't need it. And then that also starts to mess with your sleeve. Okay, so now I cut away the excess. Be careful not to cut the pattern underneath because that's how I cut this pattern piece to begin with. It was just underneath something else I was cutting. So there's our front. We've had three eighths of an inch to nothing here at the underarm. And then um, here is our, well, here's our new underarm. So if you do need to add a little bit just to make it smoother up to there, that's fine. And then make sure your notch is, mat is um, up here. So now that has been taken in an inch. So then our final thing that we wanted to mess with is the sleeve cap. And like I mentioned, I only realized this when I was actually sewing in the sleeve, how much excess there was. I originally said there was an inch and three quarters. I was wrong. There's an inch and a quarter. Um, I remeasured just to make sure, and that is a wonderful lesson. Measure twice, cut once, because um, we want to make sure everything fits in well. You don't want to take too much ease out because you do need the ease. So instead of having to take a full inch of ease out, I just need to take a half inch. Um, so there's an inch and a quarter of ease in the sleeve cap of this sleeve, and you only need three quarters of an inch, if that. You could probably get away with half of an inch and still be fine. But three quarters of an inch is a good number. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to mark... Um, I'm going to do it parallel. You want to make a line um, per or parallel to your grain line, which should be perpendicular to your lengthen and shorten line. So I'm just going to make, actually what I'm going to do is set this up on my grid. 
because I want the circles, there we go. I want the circles, which are the top of your sleeve. I'm gonna make a line that goes down, but I want it to be parallel to the green line, which should be perpendicular to your lengthened and shortened line, and mine is. You wanna check and make sure that that is the case, and it is over here, my green line's just over here. So I'm gonna make a line, whoops, so beautiful. Just a little bit, all the way down. Okay, so what we're basically doing, when you're drafting a sleeve, you're adding ease, it's raising and lowering the sleeve cap is how you add ease in when you are drafting a sleeve. So we're just simply gonna remove that. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna measure half of an inch down from the top of the sleeve cap, and that actually puts me right here at the size, uh, what is that, eight cutting line, which actually makes life really easy. So that's half of an inch down. Measure twice, cut once. So now it's just a matter of, obviously this has already been cut, but I just want to, um, I mean, you can get your, if you've got a French curve, which I do somewhere, you can get your curve in here and, um, you know, play around with it and get it to blend, you know, nicely if you want. You want this to be fairly flat a little bit there through the top because you don't want it to come to a point. And to be honest, if I were to look at my, um, the way I had to scooch it up to not, to fit correctly when I was sewing in my muslin, if you watched last Sunday's video, it was literally like this sliver. And then we're gonna come down here. You could also just eyeball this. Okay, and that looks about right. There's just too much ease in the front of the sleeve, which is what it was. You do need more sleeve uh, ease in the back, so I'm taking less in the back than I am in the front. Um, actually, I think maybe I want that a little less. You can play around with this. And if you are more comfortable making another um, muslin, you can definitely do that. This should be fine. So now I'm just gonna go in and cut what I just drew in. So that's what we've shaved off the top of our sleeve cap. Half of an inch from the top, and then we've gone to nothing on either side. So that should make our sleeve fit in so much better. So that's how you remove, ex or one of the ways you can remove excess sleeve cap from the top of a sleeve. Okay, so that's it. We have our pattern altered, um, other than the length of the skirt, but that's obviously super easy to do. I'm doing, I'm not doing that from length and shortened lines. Um, the pattern doesn't have length and shortened lines for length on the skirt, so I'm just taking it up from the hem. Um, so that's an easy one to adjust as we go. So um, yeah, that's all we have to do. So now we can iron our fabric and go ahead and cut out all of your pieces in fabric and also your pieces in interfacing. So when we come back next week, I will show you what we've cut out of the fabric and um, which pieces we've interfaced. I will see you next week.